Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert, and we're continuing to look at the statements of Jesus from the cross. And uh, as we're here on the fifth day of April, we're looking at the fifth statement of Jesus on the cross. Uh, and what's interesting is we look at this and try and process what exactly Jesus was, was thinking and feeling and experiencing on the cross. You look at the statements leading up to this that we've been looking at for the last couple of days, and uh, you, it starts with, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he's, it goes on to the statements of today, you'll be with me in paradise, to the thief that's on the cross. As he looks down at his mother and his disciples, he says, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother, as he's looking to have a plan for someone to care for his mother. Uh, you get to the fourth statement where we looked at yesterday, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We get to today's statement, which is found in John 19, 28, and it simply says, I thirst. Now, what's interesting about this is you look at all the other statements that have happened so far, and, and they're outward or they're, they're, they're pretty significant in context. He's caring for others. He's, he's making a plan for his mother to be cared for. He's uh, offering forgiveness of sins. He's making theological statements. They're all really big, powerful, external, theological, outward-facing statements. And you get to a very simple statement here, the fifth statement of Jesus on the cross of just, I thirst. And, and it might be easy for us to, to maybe over-spiritualize this and, and think, oh, well, you know, maybe he's referencing back to his statements, uh, you know, in the Sermon on the Mount and, you know, hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And he, it, maybe it's that. Or maybe we're thinking about his statements of, of living water and, and if we have living water, we'll never thirst again. And he's making statements there. But I think it's far easier for us to simply take this at face value for exactly what it looks like of him just saying that he's thirsty. See, when we watch the events of what got him to this place, he spent the night being questioned and interrogated and then beaten and flogged. Then he, he walks the Via Della Rosa, the path to the cross, and is crucified there. And now he's there hanging on the cross in the sun in Jerusalem in the heat of the day. He was thirsty. He had uh, some level, probably severe dehydration that he's struggling with and walking through in this moment. And he's simply thirsty. He's experiencing a, a real human suffering uh, reality of thirst and dehydration. And this is really important for us because from the, the entirety of history following Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, there's been a struggle to balance the two realities of his existence, both his complete humanity and his complete divinity or godness. And all along, there's a tension between these two things because our brain wants to say, well, he can't be God and human or vice versa. And, and so from the, the entire history of the early church and beyond, there's this struggle that takes place. And very soon after his crucifixion, a, a heresy arose that stated that he wasn't actually human, that Jesus was just God and he had the appearance of humanity and, and it appeared to have the, the human interaction that he did, but he was actually just fully God and not human at all. And so the, the statement went that, you know, on the cross, he didn't really suffer physical pain like we as humans would. But this statement right here is one of the leading things that refuted this heresy of, you know, he experienced thirst just like you and I would if we went through the same sequence of events that he did. And that's important for him to be human because it means that he understands our struggles. Scripture explains that, that there's no temptation that we've experienced that he did not. Scripture explains that he is our example and model for how to live because he's walked the, the walk that we have. So it's important that he's human, but he's all, it's also incredibly important that he's divine because without his divine nature, he can't take the punishment for our sins. Without his divine nature, he can't live a perfect and sinless life and die on our behalf. And so here in the midst of, of all the events that are going on on the cross, as he's, he's communicating his divinity by saying that he's going to be in heaven with this thief that he's communicating forgiveness to, as he's communicating all these theological statements and explaining what's happening, he pauses just to communicate his own humanity and the fact that he's suffering because he is in a human body and he's fully human yet fully divine. And this is a reality that that we probably will never be able to fully comprehend and understand because of our, 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 the limitations of our human mind. 
but it's something that should inspire us and fill us with awe, knowing that Jesus knows exactly what it's like to experience everything we do on a daily basis. That when we pray to him, when we cry out to him for help, he knows what we're going through. But he's also God. He understands what, we've, what we're walking through, what we're dealing with, but he also did it in a perfect manner. He is our example, our model. He stepped into human history as God to save us, to, to sacrifice for us. He isn't just a good teacher or a good religious leader. He is the Son of God and Savior of the world. And so today I pray that this reality of him thirsting on the cross would remind you that he knows what you're going through today, but he's got the power to, to be a present in your life and to bring salvation and help for you wherever you find yourself. So today I hope that you have a great day and I hope that you reflect on the fact that Jesus is both fully God and fully man. And I hope that that inspires you and brings you an incredible peace uh, that God is with you. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.